dear students though i have already covered this competency that is the role of xenobiotics in diseases in my offline classes but i am making this video so that it will become easy for you to revise in order to understand the role of xenobiotics in the disease or in diseases one must know what are xenobiotics and must have an idea about its occurrence and should be able to understand the terms biotransformation and detoxification and should be able to differentiate between these two terms and must be able to understand the function of cytochrome p450 and one should be aware of the phase 1 and phase 2 reactions involved in the metabolism of xenobiotics and one should have an idea about the group of molecules that undergo phase 3 reaction and must have an idea how these xenobiotics are removed from the body and should understand under which circumstances these xenobiotics get involved in disease process we the humans are exposed to number of foreign chemicals in day to day life which include food additives pesticides insecticides cosmetics food preservatives environmental pollutants which include automobile exhaust cigarette smoke chemical carcinogens and many other there are numerous compounds that are produced in the body by the bacteria and metabolism xenobiotics of the plant are all uh, sorry toxins of the plant are all xenobiotics and most important xenobiotic is the drugs which we consume so all the substances that has no useful function or when the function of the uh, the compound which is useful is over in the living organism are called as xenobiotics xenobiotics can be natural or man made we can endogenously produce xenobiotic biotics and we can come across a xenobiotic through external sources the natural xenobiotics include toxins from animals humans and plants there are more than 200000 man made chemicals which functions as xenobiotic it include it include food additives food preservatives insecticides pesticides now we will discuss the exogenous xenobiotics the exogenous xenobiotics include food additives preservatives insecticides pesticides environmental pollutants chemicals such as carbon monoxide carbon dioxide heavy metals radiations such as uv rays and cosmic rays and drugs the endogenous sources of xenobiotic include various compounds such as bilirubin steroids bile salts eicosanoids certain fatty acids and compounds produced in the body by bacterial metabolism such as histidine is converted into histamine 
So once histidine is an amino acid, once it is converted into histamine, histamine it has to be removed from the body. The various sources through which xenobiotic gain access into the human body include ingestion, inhalation and dermal penetration. Once inside the body, xenobiotics can be absorbed into the blood stream and get distributed to the body tissues and organs. Without and without going by a transformation, it can cause toxicity or it can get stored into the body tissues and organs. It can also undergo biotransformation and get stored and it can also cause toxicity once it is biotransformed. It is also possible that it can undergo conjugation directly without undergoing biotransformation and can be excreted from the body. It is also possible that a xenobiotic can undergo biotransformation followed by conjugation followed by excretion. But if it is not excreted or it persists in the body then it can produce its toxicity. Toxicity can be expressed as cancer, autoimmunity or cell injury. So all the molecules or the substances that need to be eliminated or detoxified are collectively called as xenobiotics. When drugs and other xenobiotics gain access into the human biological system, they undergo chemical alteration, a process which is called as biotransformation. See, biotransformation is a process whereby a substance is changed from one chemical form to another by a chemical reaction taking place within the body. Normally, xenobiotics and drugs, once their actions are over, once their action is over, are inactivated by a series of enzymatic reactions and excreted from the body. And this process is called as detoxification. The term biotransformation is not exactly synonymous with detoxification because biotransformation can convert a relatively harmless compounds such as procarcinogen into the reactive intermediates that is carcinogens. Whereas the detoxification means the put conversion or the biotransformation of a potentially toxic xenobiotic to a inactive metabolite so that it can be excreted from the body. Now we will discuss how our body handles the harmful compounds. The metabolism of xenobiotics is considered in mainly in two phases that is phase one and phase two but there is also phase three. We will discuss it later on. The basic purpose of phase one reaction is to convert the xenobiotic into more water soluble or polar compounds facilitating their excretion. Hydrooxylation catalyzed by cytochrome P450 or monooxygenases is the chief reaction of phase one. The enzyme cytochrome P450 occur in all living organisms from bacteria to mammals. All mammalian cells except mature RBC and skeletal muscle cells contain cytochrome P450. But the highest amount is found in the liver cells. Cytochrome P450 is a heme containing enzyme mostly occurring in the smooth endoplasmic reticulum of liver cells and most other tissues or cells and are mostly associated with the phospholipid that is 
lecithin. Cytochrome P450 is so named because they absorb light maximally at 450 nanometer. When complexed with carbon monoxide in vitro. They are also called monooxygenases. There are 150 isoforms of cytochrome. 150 isoforms of cytochrome P450, which include both the humans and other organisms. And there are 57 isoforms of cytochrome P450, which are found in humans. Most of them has a molecular weight of about 55 kilodaltons. It is abbreviated as CYP. And most of the forms are inducible. Uh, cytochrome P450, the, this is one example of cytochrome P450, 1A1. The first one stand for the family. The letter A stand for the subfamily. The second one stand for the individual member of that subfamily. This cytochrome P450 2E1 causes the induction in the, the, the its level is induced due to the consumption of ethanol and this CYP 2E1 is known to metabolize compounds which are found in the tobacco smoke and most of those compounds are procarcinogen. So what it's doing it's converting procarcinogens into carcinogens and therefore by the use of ethanol and uh, which causes the induction uh, so uh, by the uh, use of the ethanol which causes the induction of cyp 2e1 there will be an increased risk of carcinogenicity cyp 1a1 is actively involved in the metabolism of polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons converting them into potential carcinogens. Polymorphism of cytochrome P450 may explain the variation in drug responses among various individuals. Variants with low catalytic activity will have slower metabolism of the substrate and hence prolonged drug action and accumulation of drug in the body. One interesting polymorphism is of CYP 2A6, which is involved in the metabolism of tobacco, which is which contain nicotine to cotidine. There are three alleles of uh, CYP 2A6, one wild type and two null or the inactive alleles. So individuals so individuals with null alleles will have impaired metabolism of nicotine and are apparently protected from becoming tobacco dependent smokers. These individuals who are having the null or the inactive allele will smoke less because their blood and the brain concentration of nicotine will remain elevated longer than the, uh, those with the wild type allele. Cytochrome P450 2D6 is primarily involved in the metabolism of drugs we consume. Cytochrome P450 is the most versatile biocatalyst though it catalyzes wide variety wide range of reaction it is hydroxylation through which the bulk of xenobiotics are metabolized 
The substrates are usually hydrophobic and they are rendered hydrophilic and they are rendered more hydrophilic by hydroxylation reactions. These are cytochrome P450 are also called as monooxygenases because they catalyze the reaction where only one of the two oxygen of O2 is incorporated into the substrate and the other oxygen is reduced to water. They require two substrate to serve as a reductant for two oxygen of O2. The main substrate that this one is the main substrate it accept oxy, one oxygen atom and the co-substrate which is this one furnishes hydrogen atom to reduce the other oxygen to water. The role of NADPH is to reduce cytochrome P450. The reduced cytochrome then reduces oxygen to water. Because of the dual fate of oxygen, the enzyme cytochrome P450 or monooxygenases are also called as, as mixed function oxidases or mixed function oxygenases. This is to indicate that they oxidizes two different substrates, they oxidizes two different substrates simultaneously. In addition to the role of cytochrome P450 in the metabolism of xenobiotics, they are also involved in the metabolism of number of physiological compounds. For example, they are involved in the synthesis of steroid hormones. They are involved in the conversion of vitamin D to its active metabolite that is calcitriol. The basic function of phase 1 reaction is to convert the xenobiotic into more water soluble or polar compound facilitating their excretion. Phase 1 reactions are also called as functionalization reactions because a functional group is added to a xenobiotic. Hydro hydroxylation catalyzed by cytochrome P450 or monooxygenases is the chief reaction of phase 1 metabolism. Other reactions include oxidation, reduction, hydrolysis, deamination, desulfuration, and epoxidation. These compounds, the, the compounds undergone phase 1 reaction, phase 1 metabolism, may be directly excreted or it can undergo further metabolism by phase 2 reactions. Xenobiotics are mostly metabolized by hydroxylation or oxidation in phase 1 metabolism. These reactions are often catalyzed by cytochrome P450 or monooxygenases. Toline is hydroxylated to benzyl alcohol by cytochrome P450. A large number of foreign substances are destroyed in the body by oxidation such as benzyl alcohol is converted into benzoic acid by oxidation which is then conjugated by glycine and is converted into hippuric acid which is excreted from the body. The oxidation and the detoxification of alcohol is also, is also an important function of liver. Two enzymes are involved in the process that is alcohol dehydrogenase is an NAD linked enzyme which is located in the cytosol whereas aldehyde dehydrogenase which is also an NAD linked enzyme which is located in the mitochondria. 
alcohol di alcohol di hydrogenase oxidizes alco ethyl ethyl alcohol to aldehyde whereas aldehyde dehydrogenase oxidizes aldehyde to acid oxidation of some compounds may result in production of substances which are more toxic than the parent compounds such as methanol is converted into formic acid and ethylene glycol is converted into oxalic acid both of these compounds are highly toxic as compared to their parent compound the major group of compounds which are reduced and detoxified by the liver are the nitro compounds the nitro compounds are reduced to their amines aldehyde and ketone aldehyde and ketones are reduced to alcohol so para nitrophenol is converted into para aminophenol nitrobenzene is converted into amino benzene chloral is converted into trichloroethanol hydrolysis is a chemical reaction in which the toxic molecule or the xenobiotic in the body are broken is broken down into smaller molecules such as this one and this one the hydroxyl group and the hydrogen of the water are incorporated or transferred to the diff two different fragments of the substrate as you can see here the oh of the water is transferred to one fragment of the xenobiotic and the hydrogen of the water is transferred to the other fragment of the xenobiotics the bonds such as esters amides hydroxide glycosidic peptide and carbamate carbamates are biotransformed by hydrolysis with various enzymes such as esterases amidases peptidases so on and so forth this slide is showing the biotransformation of acetyl salicylic acid by hydrolysis using the enzyme esterase as you can see the uh, xenobiotic is broken down into two smaller fragment and the one smaller fragment accepts the h from the water and the other fragment accepts the oh from the water a xenobiotic metabolized into polar compound in phase 1 reaction may not be sufficiently polar to be eliminated or excreted from the body in most occasions phase 1 intermediates need to undergo further biotransformation reaction phase 2 reactions are conjugation reactions that is a metabolite molecule normally present in the body is added to the reactive site of phase 1 intermediate or metabolite however certain xenobiotics like phenol are directly conjugated without undergoing phase 1 reaction phase 2 reactions mostly metabolizes phase 1 byproduct which contain reactive group such as oh coh or nh2 into even more hydrophilic molecules into more hydrophilic and non toxic molecule so as they can be easily excreted from the body glucuronic acid conjugation catalyzed by the enzyme udp glucuronyl transferase is the most common phase 2 reaction udp glucuronic acid is the glucuronyl group donor glucuronic glucuronic acid can conjugate hydroxyl both phenolic and alcoholic carbonyl sulfhydryl and amino compounds aniline 
मॉर्फीन मैनी स्टेरॉयड एसिटाइल अमीनो फ्लोरिन आकार्सिनोजिन आर ऑल एक्सक्रीटेड एज देयर ग्लूकोरोनाइल ग्लूकोरोनाइड डेरिवेटिव ब्लू रिबन बींग हाइड्रोफोबिक इज कॉन्जुगेटेड बाई ग्लूकोरोनिक एसिड which is which then becomes water soluble and therefore it can be easily excreted bilirubin is converted into bilirubin diglucuronate and it is excreted from the body glutathione is a tripeptide glutamyl cystinyl glycine it conjugates number of xenobiotics including certain drugs glutathione is always abbreviated as gsh because it is the self hydryl group of the, the glutathione that take part in the reaction glutathione as i have already mentioned is a very good conjugating agent and it conjugates number of xenobiotic including certain drugs the this conjugation reaction is catalyzed by the enzyme glutathione s transferase which is found in high concentration in liver cells glutathione conjugate once form is now the substrate for two other enzymes that is gamma glutamyl transferase and dipeptidase gamma glutamyl transferase catalyzes the transfer of gamma glutamyl group from uh, the glutathione conjugate to an acceptor molecule resulting in the formation of cystinyl glycine x this cystine uh, cystinyl glycine x is then acted upon by another enzyme that is dipeptidase resulting in the formation of cysteine conjugate cysteine conjugate is then acetylated by acetyl coenzyme a in the presence of enzyme n acetyl transferase which results in the formation of mercaptoric acid which is which is easily excreted from the body glycine as as part of normal body metabolism conjugate bile acids converting them converting the cholic acid into glycocholic acid keno deoxycholic acid into glycokeno deoxycholic acid in addition it also detoxified toxifies many other substances converting the harmful substances into harmless derivatives for example it can conjugate benzoic acid a food preservative into hyperuric acid which which is also known as benzoyl glycine which is easily excreted from the body similarly phenyl acetic acid or phenyl acetate is conjugated with glutamine to form phenyl acetyl glutamine which can be easily excreted from the body in general sulfation decreases the toxicity of xenobiotics very often glucuronidation and sulfation can conjugate same xenobiotic alcohol steroids phenols are conjugated with sulfate and excreted from the body the enzyme that catalyzes the reaction is sulfotransferase and the sulfate group donor is 3- phosphos adenosine 5- phosphosulfate so these reactions showing the sulfation of the various compounds or molecules acetyl coenzyme a is the acetyl group donor and acetyl transferase is the uh, enzyme that catalyzes the acetylation reaction a number of drugs are detoxified by acetylation such as isoniazid and self and al amide amino hydroxyl or thiol groups are methylated and excreted from the excreted from the body in which s adenosyl methionine is the methyl group donor and the reaction is catalyzed by 
methyl transferase. There are xenobiotics which, are, are, which even after going phase 1 and phase 2 reaction may not be sufficiently polar to be excreted from the body. So the, those xenobiotics undergo phase 3 reaction such as the glutathione conjugates are N-acetylated to form cysteine conjugates which are easily excreted from the body. Phase, one react, phase 2 reactions only involve conjugation reactions whereas phase 1 reactions involve hydroxylation, oxidation, reduction and hydrolysis. Phase 1 reactions are degradative and phase 2 reactions are synthetic. In phase 1 reaction there occur an introduction or unmasking of functional group such as hydroxyl NH2, SH, oxygen or COH group. Whereas in phase 2 Phase 2 reactions generally conjugate phase 1 metabolites with glucuronic acid, sulfate, methyl, acetyl or amino acids. And therefore phase 1 reactions are called as functionalization reactions whereas phase 2 reactions are called as conjugation reactions. In phase 1 reaction the increase in hydrophilicity is very small whereas in phase 2 reactions increase in hydrophilicity is sufficiently large. Metabolites formed in phase 1 reaction may be smaller, polar, non-polar, active or inactive whereas metabolites formed in phase 2 reactions are usually larger, polar, water soluble and inactive. Phase 1 and phase 2 reactions of xenobiotics as we know that it, they, it primarily takes place in liver. After undergoing biotransformation in liver, these compounds re-enter into the blood stream and enter into the blood circulation and they are removed from the circulation and excreted from the body by two ways. They can be reabsorbed by the kidneys and excreted in the urine or they can enter or they can uh, be transported into the bile and in the liver and as the bile flows into the intestine from where they are excreted through stool. There are various factors that affect the level of xenobiotic in the body. First one is the rate of biotransformation. Rate of biotransformation may be different in different species. For example, human CYP451A2 has tenfold higher catalytic activity than that of rat. Among individuals, among human individuals, the activity of this may vary. So there is inter-individual variations. Enzyme induction or inhibition may affect the rate of clearance and hence the rate of biotransformation. The expression of various cytochrome P450 enzymes are age and sex dependent. Ex again, the expression of various cytochrome P450 enzymes can, al can also be regulated by hormone and cytokines through nuclear receptor. The, in addition, the rate, uh, in addition, there are other factors that affect the level of xenobiotics in the body which include the polarity of the parent xenobiotic and the rate of excretion by the liver or kidneys. 
There is a strong relationship between xenobiotic excretion and the toxicity associated with it. Most xenobiotics are transformed into products that are more polar and thus are more radially excreted than the parent molecule. Therefore, the rate of metabolism is critical determinant of the toxic potential of a xenobiotic. Compounds that are radially metabolized are usually radially excreted and thus are proportionally less prone to accumulate in the tissues and therefore they cause less toxicity. However, certain xenobiotics may accumulate in certain tissues and they can be released from those tissues slowly. For example, lead stored in bone does not produce toxicity. But when it is mobilized from the bone and when it enters into the soft tissues, it causes its toxicity. Lead can also enter into red blood cells and cause hemolysis and may produce anemia. Failure to detoxify cytochrome P450 metabolites intermediates into non-toxic metabolites by conjugation gives them chance to bind, to covalently bind or react with cellular macromolecules such as proteins, nucleic acids or lipids thus causing cell death or cell injury can cause mutation, cancer or autoimmune diseases. The generalization that phase 1 and phase 2 are detoxifying and chemo preventive or protective might not be true under all circumstances. Some compounds may skip, uh, escape excretion and re-enter circulation and can cause toxicity which can be manifested in various forms. Defect, defect in the transport of conjugated xenobiotics may also cause its accumulation and toxicity. For example, Dubin-Johnson syndrome is caused due to inability of the liver cells to excrete conjugated bilirubin and estrogen into bile. Some xenobiotics have toxic, there are various xenobiotics that have the toxic effects on humans. Here I am giving you few examples like monosodium glutamate or artificial sweeteners such as sucrose. If they are not properly metabolized and removed from the body, they can cause immediate as well as the long-term effects. Immediate effects include headache, headache altered concentration and the long-term effects of accumulation of or the presence of monosodium glutamate or artificial sweeteners can cause risk of infertility, cancer, and cardiovascular diseases. Chemicals like bisphenol A can cause hormonal imbalance and malabsorption syndrome if it is not removed from the body, if it is not uh, the, removed from the body. Bisphenol A is uh, a chemical which is very commonly used in making plastics that are very often used in containers that store food and beverages so because of uh, because they are in, uh, they are used for making various plastic containers we come in contact with this chemical and if it is not detoxified properly it can cause toxicity which can lead to various diseases heavy metals for example, arsenic and water. If we consume a water having arsenic and that arsenic, if it is not detoxified and removed from the body, it can produce variety of lesions on hands and foot. 
and it may also cause cancer. So this is how we are exposed. We can, this is how these various xenobiotics can cause diseases if they are not removed from the body after their beneficial effect is over. Thank you. With this, I have completed the competency, the role of xenobiotic in diseases. Thank you.